Welcome back to Coast View. Listen, we're going to move over to, to uh, Corey Christie here shortly. I just want to share real quick uh, something that my friend, my coworker, Patty Steele, uh, she's a terrific person, but she posted this. Each morning, peace arrives at your door in the form of choices. I love that one. Each morning, peace arrives at your door in the form of choices. We control our own destiny. As I've read so many, if I've shared so many times before, too often we let what's going on in our in the world around us get inside us of us, and too often. It might be negative, <laughs> and uh, and that's not that's not because of the person around us who is being negative. It's because we let it come in. So we have choices to make, and we can find peace if we make the right choices. I want to thank my friend Patty Steele for for posting that. So now let's move over to Corey Christie. He's the out, outreach program director for the Maritime and Seafood Industry Museum in Biloxi. He's deeply, deeply involved involved in the community, and someone I really enjoy just having conversations with. Corey, how you been, man? Oh, I've been great, man. Just busy um, helping all these great things move along around here. Well, I, you know what? You're a regular listener, Coach, and I appreciate that. You, you've really. What's interesting about the conversations we've had offline is that, and as you engage with Coast View, you're learning a lot more about the leaders who are investing in Coastal Mississippi. Those that are that are helping sort of raise the bar. It's kind of been helpful for you as you as you do the work that you want to do in the community as well. Yeah, it's great to see what other people are up to. You know, I'm usually up to date on what's going on as far as projects and things like that. But it's helpful to hear uh, where people are coming from and what their goals are and where they see things going um, and how I can adjust my activities to help that along or to make sure that things end up where you know we all want to see them. Well, well, I've said this before. But it takes a village to build a great community. Some of that happens at the investment level. Maybe some of that even happens at a level above that. That's about developing a vision for a community. Let's say Biloxi in this case. And then you have developers that buy into that vision and, and who are willing to invest millions in, the, in, their vi in, in that vision and add their own flair to it. Uh, you know, there, there are so many great examples of that. The Nico Restaurant Group, I, I said to, to them they should change the name because it's not just uh, restaurants that they're doing. They're doing mixed use and other kinds of housing developments, and they're bringing values to community all along the coast, including there in, uh, in Biloxi. But, but it does take a lot. And you, you know the the past conversations that you and I have had, you're, you've been focused on the mural project. There's so many other things that you're focused on, but it does take a village to create the best of a community, doesn't it? It really does, and, and you know, there's so many parts that go into it. And I've been lucky to find the thing that I understand and be able to work on that. Uh, you know, I don't have the, the big investment dollars, or I don't understand. Um, project built buying buildings and roads necessarily, but I do understand how arts can affect it and how we can build a more walkable community and the importance of things like third places. And I've been able to help with that, the things I understand. And I think that's how anyone out there can really get involved and have their impact. Yeah, you know, you know from my conversations with Mayor Fofo Gillage that uh, the amount of development on the on the you know development chalkboard as we speak is is unprecedented for for downtown. Biloxi, the opportunities with so many mixed-use developments coming to downtown, bringing more people downtown. You're, you're, you've uh, you've had a lot of success thinking about this from a point of view of you know creating pockets of development, haven't you? Yes, sir. The whole idea of you know the small, the walkable neighborhood where you can get all the things you need in a close space, um, and you know we live right here, kind of in that West Howard corridor, as close as you can get to downtown right now. And, uh, you know, over the last eight years, it's really been great to see the development of things that have made this a very inclusive and uh, I like to use the word sustainable a lot neighborhood. You know, I can on foot, I can get everything I need. And, and that's going to build the most equity for people or the most quality for people. Well, Corey, as you well know. That's the way it's going to be from this point forward. This whole notion of before where people wanted to live out in the rural areas as far out as possible and drive to work every day, Expensive. those days for a lot of reasons are changing. I mean, the creative class, the new economy is saying that young people, and not in, in some cases retirees as well, so this is not necessarily just a young people thing. They want to live, work, and play in a similar area. And what you're seeing, again, all across, from Pascagoula to St. 
Atlas and all points in between, you're seeing a move toward more mixed use, more creating greater restaurants, more entertainment opportunities, more art. I mean, a good project just, just got culminated in, in downtown uh, Pascagoula, and then you've got the mural project in Bay St. Louis, similar to what you guys have done in, in Biloxi. But it's, uh, it's exciting to see that the communities and the investment dollars are beginning to pour into creating this this most significant uh, you know uh, evolution, which is creating a sense of place where people can live, work, and play in a similar area. And that's good to see, isn't it? Oh, it's wonderful. And it's been this great slow burn in downtown Biloxi and across the coast, really. You know, where you have your hotspot areas like Bay St. Louis and Ocean Springs, everybody's familiar with what they have going on. But we've been fortunate to have as many restaurants pop up and survive um, here in our area with the places like the Greenhouse. They're jacked up, creating great little third places. Where people go spend a great part of their morning or their lunchtime just hanging out. Um, and that's brought development around them. And yeah. then it's great to see our, our next step is really living down here and having those buildings come in with Jordan doing the mixed juice. And, uh, it's, you know, Spinner's coming with a great short-term rental with the mixed juice right down the street. And these are the, you know, the next step, getting people down here all the time, spending money in the businesses and leads to that next level of growth. Well, you heard my conversation probably with Shad White, the state auditor, who has developed a program that he thinks is going to help with, at least from his perspective, being able to tackle the brain drain. And when Jordan talks about, Jordan Nico, when he talks about when they come into a community, they're really focused on what can we bring to it that's going to add value? What's missing in this community? What can we do to build a better place so that my friends don't have to leave Mississippi in order to be successful? And, uh, you know, we've got a cadre of young young developers who are investing millions and millions of dollars all across the coast of Mississippi. And I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to share them with the audience because they're really making a difference. Hey, we'll come back to community here in just a second. Before we get too far away from the uh, Maritime and Seafood Industry Museum, what's going on there these days? Well, we have a bunch going on in summertime coming up. It's our busy time, of course. Uh, we've just got the schooners back rolling. Uh, so you can get out and do a great cruise on the, on the schooners. Just walk up and hop on uh, two and a half hour cruises in the evening. Uh, we have our summer camp signups coming up, which is our biggest, especially for me, <laughs> our biggest activity of the year, dealing with 500 or so little rascals running around, educating them about uh, the maritime history and sailing and fishing and all that good stuff. Uh, but we also have a couple of new things. We're starting to try to bring food trucks in. So we had our first one this past Monday. You know, we don't have a restaurant and not a lot around us, unfortunately. So we want to give people that option. Uh, we had Frankie Faze come down, and they're going to be back on the 25th to serve folks. Uh, we have a great art exhibit right now. It's really outside of our normal traditional stuff. Uh, a guy named Stephen Dark who does sculpture out of Gulf Shores, Alabama, and he does a sculpture, puts it in the ocean or the water, and lets barnacles accumulate, and then displays it that way. Uh, so it's a very it's and the content's all very um, golf with mermaids and pirates and things like that. But, uh, and, you know, we're growing, doing all sorts of things, um, you know, to keep the people coming in. So definitely stop by, check out our, our beautiful new website and <laughs> come see us. Hey, look, it's, it's exciting to see the schooners, you know, back up and running in the way that you're talking about them. And if you go by there now, if you go by the docks these days or the pier these days, what you see is kind of a mess. It's really a mess. But what's, what's happening is you're you're seeing the boardwalks come to fruition. The boardwalk, I love the boardwalks, incidentally, because I'll go from my house near Pops Ferry uh, Bridge and go down to the beach and then drive as far as I can. You, I can continue to drive, which I always do. But uh, but without the boardwalk, it's a little bit dicier. And the, the fact that we're going to have this boardwalk that eventually goes all the way around the point of Alexi, that's exciting. So I bet you I bet you all are looking forward to getting that area cleaned up because it really doesn't look so good at this moment. Yeah, unfortunately, the two hurricanes in a row hit us and really did some damage to our pier. So we're working now, getting bids in to get that cleaned up and looking brand new and good. Uh, but the boardwalks have already been good you know down to the point they're kind of finished it looks good there's more and more people down there using that and for me i, I love to avoid driving as much as possible <laughs> so yeah. that'll be a great uh, bike route to work once it's all complete 
Oh, won't it, won't it be, man? It will be so exciting. And, you know, Fofo is determined. I mean, he, he believes in that vision. And, you know, what's interesting, the approach they're using to build them have really weathered the storms really well. I mean, people worried that maybe they would get, you know, demolished. And that hasn't happened. I yeah, was, the ones I, in West Pelosi look great. I mean, that's yeah, right after a storm, yeah. we were out there. And they got, they got pounded, man. <laughs> they got pounded over the last couple of years. So they've had, they've had tremendous tests along the way. Hey, that is for sure. Hey, listen, we're having a conversation with my friend Corey Christie. When we come back, we're going to continue the conversation around the kind of small things that make a big difference in building a community sense of place. We'll come back after this. Welcome back to Kosu. Listen, I love doing Kosu. I guess by now, if you're a listener, you know that already. Um, but I do my homework. I spend a lot of time with some amazing guests. I learn from them. And I really enjoy conversations like the one we're having today with Corey Christie. He's been on the show three or four times. And I was mentioning to him during the break that we should get together more often. Because one of the things he brings to the table, and then we can have a conversation with Jordan Nico about his vision and the investments that he's making. And we can have a conversation with Ashley Edwards about the need to bring communities together and have sort of a master plan. And then nonprofits and all these different groups that work together. But what's interesting about Corey is that certainly he works at the Maritime and Seafood Industry Museum, but he also spends a lot of volunteer time just helping build a better community. And, you know, one of the things that that is powerful about the conversation that you and I can have and that we do have is the fact that it's you, you need all these big things to work for sure. But then at the end of the day, it can often be the really small things that add up over time to create create a great community. And you have a strong belief in that, don't you? Yes, I, I really believe in the incremental approach um, and the effect that can have. And I've spoken to many small business owners down here and even some bigger ones that have been drawn by the activities that we've done uh, through the volunteering and through Main Street. Um, our buddy Bobby Gillen and his company, Coast uh, Gulf Coast Impact Investments, um, just taking that approach to do small things, to drive in those amenities that hopefully will uh, you know, attract our young people to stay, to fight the brain drain a little bit in that way by giving them things to do. Um, and it's, it's had effect and it's visible. Yeah, you, you talk, we mentioned a few minutes ago about the focus on the pockets of development, but you think about it, the lot, West Howard, Main Street, Lemuse and Water, there are some, there are some, you know, some areas you can really zero in on. That when you add, when you get done, and then you add those areas together, it creates tremendous success for Biloxi going forward, doesn't it? Yeah, and the the lot or now the district green has become a great example of how those things come together. Uh, we, you know, that was where the uh, upstairs downstairs um, adventures building was. It burned down, so it was literally rubble just over two years ago. And with bringing in art, we got some help from uh, Roger over at the Gulf Coast um, Development, or not Development. Community Foundation. Community yes. Foundation, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. To do some art there, brought that in, and it brought enough traffic that the owners dumped 40 grand into that space to turn it into a public space. A couple of businesses there now. Uh, the Main Street First Friday is happening there now, which is bringing 500 folks a month. So it's really had some impact through art, through, through a couple of big pieces of art. Um, and, and that the building owners there even, you know, talk about the impact that that had on making their decision. And now the buildings around it are starting to develop. So and it was a dead space for so long. Uh, just showing what some community folks can do, a handful of artists, a, a community organization, and then private investment comes. Well, Corey, one of the things that has been um, something I always understood as a, as a publisher of a newspaper, and I can thank my friend Alberto Ibarguen at the Knight Foundation for helping me see this, and that is that certainly journalism is an important part of keeping a community together. But he always had a very strong belief in the arts. I mean, you know, it's the Knight Foundation's contribution to the Orr Museum over time and to other museums in coastal Mississippi, they made massive investments in the arts in communities all across the United States, especially in Miami. Um, so to understand sort of globally that arts help define a community and can help you know, create a perception about a community that is incredibly special. Um, the conversation I had with Julian Rankin at the at the uh, Walter Anderson Museum, and Julian, so as you know, so articulate when it comes to describing, you know, how art helps, how art and the landscapes sort of come together to define one another and to get to have great artists like 
Walter Anderson that can influence us and in his incredible work, this Renaissance man's work. But you don't have to get to that level to still have art define a place. I mean, one of the beauties of the coast of Mississippi is that we are full of artists, incredibly talented artists that are all sort of making their name. Some are doing it professionally. Some are doing it, you know, as a sideline. But but their gift adds so much more, so many more dimensions to coast of Mississippi, don't they? Yeah, so we're just so lucky to have the talent that we have here. You know, through all these projects, we're at 21 public art installations now. We're working on 10 crosswalks right now. Um, you know, through the years, I've produced many, many art shows, and there's just never a lack of talent to produce these things. And bringing them together really creates these crowds and a, feel, a sense of community, and people don't expect, you know, sometimes we'll do this a wacky art show or throw up a mural and the amount of people that appreciate it and come see it is unbelievable. And that's driven by our talent that's still really untapped. Um, you know, we, we, we should be able to economize that a little bit better, I think, as a group and across the coast, uh, you know, ways to get them paid and to use it to draw people in. So when you think about art, you heard, you heard what I said. Why is it so powerful? Why tell tell me that? Why does it create such such a such, so much more of a sense of place when you feel the art of a community? Well, I think it's the one of the few things that will always be unique. No matter where you go, it's going to be defined by the place, the artist that's creating from the influences around them. So it's really going to tell a story of where you are. If you were in, we were just in Miami in, in the Wynwood neighborhood, and that place is just. I mean, there's wall to wall art, and it's all telling the story of Miami. In one way or another and that's what you get with it you know as the world gets more and more homogenized with mcdonald's and walmart's and things like that the art is still going to be from biloxi or from bay st louis and it's going to tell that particular story um and, and there's no way to change that there's no way to um have that effect that, that same homogenizing effect on art so it, that along with small businesses in my mind can really define a place. I see the art and culture can bind uh, people to a place in ways that we or I think we're beginning to realize, but more people should should understand. A lot of times it happens and they don't even know it. It's just they f feel it and they're not sure how they have that feeling. Anyway, listen, uh, it's been great to visit with you today, Corey. We're going to come together more often and uh, just chat about the, the small things that really make a difference for our community. I appreciate you, my friend. Oh, yeah. You bet. So, uh, look, have a great day. Go, go, go enjoy the coast view. And in that moment, find time to dream bigger. Have a great oh, yeah. day. Come we'll see, see us at the museum and uh, we'll see you when we see you. You bet. You bet. We'll see you on Monday.